938 Live. This is Talkback. Why are foreign-born athletes still a point of contention for Singaporeans? Are we better off not winning medals or winning fewer medals than having foreign-born athletes win medals for us? While the recently concluded Commonwealth Games saw our national paddlers winning six out of seven gold medals available at Glasgow 2014, a number of Singaporeans, though, have taken to social media. They've also been writing to local media organizations to complain about the number of foreign-born players in the 10-member team which included two Singapore-born paddlers, by the way, Clarence Chu and Isabel Lee. The same issue has flared up several times in the past six years, particularly when the trio of Feng Tianwei, Li Jiawei and Wang Yueku won a historic gold at the World Championships four years ago. Would you rather we won fewer medals with a complete team of Singapore-born athletes? What's the purpose of sports anyway? Should winning medals really be the chief focus? Uh, what are the benefits of having foreign-born athletes on our sports teams? What more can be done to help our home? Homegrown athletes reach higher levels of performance. Perhaps you could also tell us that whether or not you've seen any benefits of having foreign-born athletes in Singapore to our homegrown athletes as it helps them. Tell us what you think on 669-11938. Facebook, of course, is the other place you can talk to us, official 938 Live. And joining us in the studio today is 938 Live sports editor Raj Kumar. Good morning, Good morning Raj. Good. Now, after all these years, foreign-born athletes representing Singapore still a point of contention as evidenced by comments on social media media and in the forum pages, the voices pages of the mm. local papers as well. Why do you think this is? I believe there are four groups, uh, you know, in relation to, to the comments that were made uh, over the last few years. I think uh, one group is genuinely concerned about the foreign athletes depriving the local athletes of uh, opportunities to actually go and excel and uh, represent the nation. That's one group. The second group is, uh, I believe, is the vast majority in the sense that they they don't really care whether you are a foreign-born athlete or a local-born athlete. As long as you have the national, as long as you don the national jersey, you have the national flag on your jersey and you represent the colours, you sing the Majula Singapura, you know, when we win medals and all that, uh, I think the vast majority support uh, mm. these athletes. You have the, to sing the Majula Singapura. I, I, yeah, I think, that's, I think that's a given. The third group, uh, maybe there's a, a, a disgruntled group, uh, a minority, I guess, who might have confused the, the government's immigration policy. They're, they're not happy with it. Uh, so they channel their aggression online and just and simply voice out, you know, and criticize everything that it, that, that it has to do with our foreigners. Mm. And the last group probably just doesn't give uh, two hoots about what's happening. As long as their bread and butter is not affected, uh, they just don't bother. So, mm. so of the four groups, I think the vast majority of Singaporeans are relatively not bothered whether mm. you're a foreigner or whether you're local born. As long as you're out there, you've trained, you've bled, uh, you know, you've sweat and you've trained for years, and you you bring glory to the nation in whichever at whichever level. Uh, the majority of the Singaporeans, I believe, are happy. Well, which group do you fall into? If you're listening to us right now, call us 669-11938. Official 938 Live is our Facebook page. We want to see your comments there as well. I want to talk about the first group you mm. mentioned, mm. Raj. You said there's a group of Singaporeans who feel that the presence of foreign-born athletes in Singapore Deprive. deprives local athletes mm. of opportunities on the international stage. To what extent is this true? I don't think it's up to... It's a it's at a major level because no national association, as far in the republic, will deprive any local athlete of the chance to represent the country. Um, the the foreign tel- the the foreign sports talent scheme or F FST uh, was introduced, I believe, in 1996. Uh, a few of the national associations like badminton, uh, football, table tennis, uh, they were the first few that actually took up the scheme. And uh, relatively, uh, we've seen quite a number of foreign athletes in badminton and table tennis uh, because maybe our Singaporean athletes in these two sports have not been able to rise to the occasion. I mean, so not- ultimately, why was there a need for the foreign sports talent scheme? Was it just so that we could win medals? No, it's to inspire the locals to actually, you know, take up the challenge. If we, if uh, if our local sports administrators are willing to bring in foreigners, and. Uh, we all know that if you go on to win uh, an Olympic gold medal, for example, a million dollars, you know, awaits the winner. It's one of the. It's probably the highest ever offered to a gold medalist in the history of any nation. One million dollars, and that's considering of uh, the small pool of talents that we have. You know, four four million Singapore-born uh, residents, and with such a small pool of talent, 
and how long are we going to continue uh, to to deprive ourselves of of success at the international level? Tan Hao Liang, the weightlifter, in 1960 was the last time was the first time we actually won an Olympic medal. From 1960, the the last time they, or, that we actually went on to win a medal was more than f- about 50 years uh, in 2008. You said that they were brought in in a sense to inspire the local athletes, exactly. right? The Singapore born to set athletes the standards, to set the standards and then inspire and encourage and post the challenge to the local athletes that if we can do it, why can't you? This is your country. Couldn't we have inspired our athletes in other ways? I th- I think um, it, it it also depends on 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 what the parents and uh, and our own desires. I mean, it's all about the paper chase. Let's let's be realistic. As far as the Lion City is concerned, it's all about academic pursuits. Mm. And uh, we were just talking yesterday about how you know it should be yeah, about yeah. skills based pursuits and you know competencies exactly. and all that. But uh, but the fact is, yes, you are right. A lot of parents I know would not encourage their kids to go into a full time sports career. Yeah, yeah. But why wouldn't they do that? You see, that is the question. Also, is it's a chicken and egg thing. They might not do so because they feel like oh, there's really no point in a sporting lack, career. Lack of opportunities. A uh, lack of opportunities within sports. It's a small pool of athletes mm. that make it. And, uh, well, you don't want to just bank bank on that mm. for your entire future. What if mm. you have a sports-based injury? What are you mm. going to do after that? Exactly. So all of these things need to be addressed as well in order to encourage more parents and more students to say, yeah, you know, I want to uh, defer school for a while and have mm. a full-time mm. sporting career, don't you think? I mean, the mindsets have, have changed relatively over the last 20 years because... Uh, the Singapore Sports Council, now known, now known as Sport uh, Singapore, they've done uh, relatively well together with the Singapore National Olympic Council in terms of uh, generating uh, revenue, sponsorship, coming up with several programs to help uh, tailor uh, certain programs for athletes who want to study as well as pursue a, 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 a certain sport. Uh, we've seen Jasmine Sir do it, the National Shooter, we've seen Isabel Lee do it. The Singapore Sports School celebrated uh, its 10th anniversary this year and several of those uh, Students and 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 when they graduated, they they went on to represent Singapore and they won medals. I mean, the sports school is a huge, um, is a huge uh, success story because they've really they've really lived up to the to the to the whole mindset of having set it up in the first place where you can actually study and train uh, full time. Well, that is an improvement certainly in the Singapore context yes. for Singapore. Mm. But if you compare us to foreign born athletes who perhaps from a young age mm. have eaten, have slept and breathed their sport, hmm. then where do we stand? I think, I mean... In terms in, of the, in the commitment case, to the sport. In, in, the, in, in, uh, in the case of Feng Tianwei, she was, uh, I think she was, she did not really represent China, did not get to represent China, uh, and she was discovered by the Singapore's uh, Table Tennis Association scouts, I believe in about 2006, when she was about 18 years old. Uh, and then she, she was she was undergoing a, a very tough time, the death of her father, and uh, and then the, the STTA offered her an opportunity. Why not come and play with us? Back then, she was ranked, I believe, seventy uh, fifth in the world. So she had not represented China. We took her on board. Uh, we fast tracked her citizenship. Two years later, two thousand and eight, she's part of the squad that won the silver medal at the Olympic Games, thus ending a drought of more than fifty years. Mm. Okay, so you said that they were brought in to inspire the Singapore-born mm. athletes. Has it worked? I think to a certain extent... Is, Are they inspired, is, really? Is, Isabel Lee, Clarence Chu, they did extremely well at the Youth Olympic Games four years ago. Uh, they were also part of uh, the Asia, the Commonwealth Games squad, that, the part of the 10-member squad that went. But let's be realistic. I mean, if we did not... I, uh, the STTA president, outgoing president, Lee Biwa, did say she did say that she did not... Uh, she wanted to feel uh, Isabel in the women's team final. But if she had lost and if they didn't win the gold medal, who would have been held accountable? So that's why they decided to go with uh, the, the the foreign talents instead. Right. I'm going to quote Lee Biwa here, the outgoing STTA president. If we had fielded her, meaning Isabel Lee, mm. and lost the gold medal, do you think no one would have criticized us? Well, that's the question. Uh, are we better off not winning medals than having foreign-born athletes win them for us? Or... Would you be upset if we didn't win as many medals because mm. the foreign-born mm. athletes weren't there? Mm. What are you prepared to live with? Which scenario is better? Call us 669-11938. Let's see what Raymond has to say about this. Hi, Raymond. Good morning. Hi, hi good morning. Uh, I, I always love youth development. I think the biggest grouse is I'm the category that uh, wants to see youth development regardless of, uh, regardless of race because as long as you're in Singapore, 
I would assume that you'll be rooted to Singapore. I think the main grounds for many people is actually try to get some of these foreign-born talent to give a simple interview in Singlish. I think that will solve a lot of problems. Mm. I mean, if you talk about Majula Singapura, Raj, how many of the <laughs> Chinese-born, I mean, even us locals who sing Majula Singapura know exactly the words mm. beyond onward Singapore, no? Yeah, that's why so, I was telling Raj. Yeah, are they singing it properly? <laughs> assimilation. Yeah. 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 So this is something we're going to inculcate to all our volunteers. You volunteer, you must sing, you must know the exact meaning. I think if they can speak a, a splattering of Singlish, I think Singaporeans will love them. Mm. So I, I respect the schedule, the hectic schedule, but come on. So many years in Singapore, the coaches uh, or, or the, the leaders should make it into a KPI and learn mm. simple English or simple Singlish. That's okay, R- Raymond, as it stands yeah. now, as yeah. the situation is right now, do you think we are better off winning fewer medals rather than having foreign-born athletes win them for us? I think, I think it is a balance because as a, as, a, as a parent of two young children, I look at all these athletes and it's a talking point. I said, you know how hard they work on just looking at the one small white ball and just hitting against the ball hours and hours and hours. And for a few moments, they make it fantastic. They lose it another four years. So it's a lot of uh, teachable moments. And I think, like Raj said, it is a very inspiring story. And a lot of parents are looking at all the how much money uh, my kid will bring. But a lot of these people, they had no choice but to choose only sport as a way of uh, poverty. Thank you very much for that, Raymond. The question is, I mean, you mentioned parents, Raymond. The question is, how many parents would encourage their children to commit themselves to a sport as a full-time career? Stay with us on 938 Live. And uh, until they do that, I think we might continue to have a dearth of sporting talent, homegrown sporting talent, that can compete on the international stage and bring in those medals. But think about this, okay? What is the point of sport in the first place? Is it really just about winning those medals? We'll talk to Eric and Joshua in just a moment. Stay with us. Why are foreign-born athletes still a point of contention for Singaporeans? Now, for those who may be against having foreign-born athletes compete for Singapore, think about this. Are we better off not winning as many medals rather than having foreign-born athletes win them for us? You can call us 669-11938. Here's a letter from Thomas Lee Chi Chi who wrote in to the Voices page of Today newspaper. He said the continued reliance on China-born players in table tennis is worrying and the feelings expressed by many Singaporeans perhaps are understandable. On the other hand, can Singaporeans accept repeated failures at the international meets with open hearts while we continue to groom local talent? Well, how long are you willing to wait? Call us 669-11938. First of all though, Raj, I want to talk to you about something that Raymond, one of our callers, mentioned earlier. He said that it's about assimilation more than anything else. If these foreign-born athletes could do an interview in English mm. or even Singlish, mm. we would appreciate them more. And I remember once we had them right outside our studio, yeah. and I had said, can we get them in to talk to us just for a few minutes? Mm. And they had told me, their people, their minders yeah, and yeah. staffers had told me, oh, no, no, English radio, no way. Mm. We mm. can't do it. Mm. And that was really hard for me to accept as well, and yeah. I'm sure for many Singaporeans. But I know that Lee Bi when she was pr- uh, president of the STTA, I mean, she's now outgoing yep, president yep. of the STTA, had instituted English courses for these athletes. What happened there? Raymond said exactly what I told Libby Ward in 2008 when I was in Beijing and, uh, you know, covering the games. And I, I told her, I said, you have to get the athletes, like uh, back then it was Li Chiawei, Wang Yuegu and Feng Tianwei. They have to appear in the public, you know, speaking in English, trying to assimilate themselves. Tao Li has done a tremendous job. Yes, she she's came, always held up yeah, as a great example. Exactly, yeah, yeah. She, I mean, she came to Singapore uh, for for educational purposes. They talent spotted her and then they, you know, they made her into a, a national swimmer. Ronald Susilo also came to Singapore to study and then uh, he was talent spotted. And these two, you don't really hear anything uh, ne- negative, negative yeah. Yeah, surrounding these two whenever they do well and excel for the Republic. Why? Because these two have really grounded themselves and mixed around. Uh, you know, they speak English, they speak English, whatever, but uh, they've done relatively well. Uh, coming back to the uh, the recent Commonwealth Games showing, honestly, I did see our peddlers when, when we won 
uh, the gold medals, they were singing the Majula. You can actually, <laughs> okay. I don't know whether you can hear them, but you can see them mouthing the words. So, Correctly. I mean, let's be, let's be fair. If you watch, at the least they're chance, trying. Yeah, at least they're yeah. trying. Yes, but they should do more. But what happened with those English classes, those English lessons? I, that's something I think uh, maybe Biwa you know, needs would, to address again. Yeah, huh? and, and, and if her successor, Ellen Lee, you know, if she's, uh, if she's becomes the new president uh, in two weeks' time, then maybe she will now make it mandatory. All the all the China born athletes have to really take up uh, Mandarin courses at the probably the advanced sorry, level. Sorry, English oh, courses. Sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah uh, at the advanced level and uh, in you know. Yeah, I mean, as long as they can sound Singaporean, it doesn't have yeah. to be perfect English. A lot of Singaporeans themselves don't speak perfect English, you know. But if you sound remotely Singlish, yeah. that might help so a little it's, bit. It's, it's it's down to that, I think, because they don't. The public doesn't see them uh, trying. Trying, yeah. yeah. And so that, even if you saw a desire in them to hmm. become more Singaporean in that sense, I think it would certainly help. Let's see what Eric has to say about this. Eric, what do you think? Hi, morning, Bertie and uh, Raj. Okay, I think for me, I I really don't mind whether is it a uh, uh, foreign talent or local born talent playing the game and winning matter, right? I think most important of all, so long as our national flag is flying, I'm very really, very happy, right? I think what frustrates me is that I think the association when they select the foreign talent, they really need to bring in good talents like what I was saying to actually drive our local talents, right? And not you know bringing a standard almost similar. Then I think that would deprive uh, our local local talent to say that. Hey, why? Why? Why do you bring a foreign talent? It's almost the same standard as me, right? Mm. And uh, so think, far, based on your own observations, yeah. are the foreign talent here, the foreign sporting talent, much more superior than the homegrown talent? Well, I think Barry, I think you know that I used to call for local soccer, right? Yes, so, yes, I know you're game. a big fan. Yeah. <laughs> then the example I would like to use, I would like to use the football association. Okay, uh, you can see the foreign talent coming in, which with due respect, I'm not going to mention name. Okay, some of the 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 recent local talents comes in I, I can I can actually pity the local boys and then when I talk to them we say that Eric you see they bring in local talents when we play in the S League they are almost similar, similar standard as us right mm, so foreign or local similar standard but still there's this difference yeah why, why right. bother bringing them in if they are just as good as I am or just right. as bad as I am yeah. okay so we'll talk more about that Eric uh, when we continue on Talk Back right after news and sports thanks so much for your phone call as well stay with us on 938 Live why are foreign-born athletes still a point of contention for many Singaporeans? Those of you who may be against having foreign-born athletes compete for Singapore, think about this. Are we better off not winning medals than having the foreign-born athletes win them for us? Would you rather we won fewer medals with a complete team of Singapore-born athletes? Give us a call, 669-11938. Joining us in the studio today, 938 Live Sports Editor Raj Kumar. Now, Raj, during your sports bulletin just a couple of seconds ago, you were talking about the YOG medalists. Mm. They're all Singapore-born athletes, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. And the chef de Michon did say, though, that such games are not about just winning it's medals. Not, exactly. But that's the YOG. Yes, that's what I mean. Yeah. The other games tend to be about winning medals, exactly. right? It's all about competitive results and... Uh Okay, um. well, I don't know. Should, should we be a little more idealistic or is that what we will be described as if we say that victory in sport is not about just the medals? Well, Ramesh Narayanan, who wrote into the Today newspaper, thinks so. He says, we must decide what we expect of our athletes. Is the measure of success only to win medals at all costs or is it to represent Singapore with pride and sportsmanship, inspiring a future generation to go further? While cash-laden countries can buy medals, or success. A victory is not only about winning, but also about winning against all odds. We could buy our way to sporting honours to put us on the map. But what message would it send to the next generation? Well, what do you think? You can call in as well. 669-11938. Let's see who's joining us now. We've got Joshua on the line. Hi, Joshua. Good morning. Yeah, hi. Morning. Yeah, what do you think, Joshua? Morning, Meredith. Morning, Raj. Hello. Yeah, I'm just a casual observer, I think. Yeah, and I was just thinking about what the categories and the groups of people that Raj was mentioning earlier. And I, I find it very hard to put myself in either one of the groups. Um, I'm, 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 I'm happy if Singapore wins a medal, but I somehow feel a bit awkward. I feel I can't really, you know, be that happy or I can't really celebrate, you know, together for some reason. If it's and a foreign-born athlete, you're saying? I mean, yeah, if, I mean, in a sense, if the majority of the medals were won by the foreign born athletes mm. find that you know yeah we may have won but you know find it probably a bit hard to feel really that happy 
Mm. But why and, is that? Yeah. If these foreign-born athletes are now Singaporean, why would you feel or, or you know, look at them differently? Perhaps, perhaps the, it's, it's because maybe, you know, the background knowledge, maybe they were brought in for a purpose. Mm. They were, in a sense, to put it in a, you know, to use, probably this word isn't very good, mercenaries. Mm. You know, they're, they're <clears throat> brought in for, for a reason. And, and, and I was just thinking that, you know, could it be because of the proportion? You know, maybe if there is a way to uh, appropriately a, a proportionate the amount of uh, 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 such um, people who will come and help us. I mean, we can understand from the policymakers' point of view that, you know, perhaps these are more long-term views with regards to inspiring our athletes. And uh, so, uh, I'm really okay. Mm. But it, it, it's just like, you know, in the time being, it's really a little bit hard going and no, right, sometimes right. we all like a fairy tale story you know I mean you know, I'm, I am I watch soccer so I, I recall the times when you know we were really happy with people like Abbas Alistair Edwards and and, and, and even Ose Irate you know those, I came from those times and we were like you know why was <laughs> that happy. okay why yeah, was we that really fine happy. we were really happy with you know, our Singapore team you know with those you know few foreign talents who were really you know, kind of okay, so that. why was that okay, and why is this now rather awkward and uncomfortable? Maybe it's a proportion thing, you know. Maybe maybe for for table tennis, maybe one out of four persons, you know, or or, or, or what that, that that could be a better proportion to know. All right, thank you very much for that, Joshua. I really appreciate it. What do you think, Raj? Perhaps we could talk about how this is done in other countries, because mm. obviously we're not the only country importing talent. Other countries have been doing it for many many decades. Yeah. Uh, so. Is it a question of proportion that is a problem in Singapore? The United States, uh, when I read up uh, last night, I was surprised to find out in the last 20 years, uh, they've, I think they've recruited about 20 table tennis players from China. You're talking about the United States with a population of 250 to 300 million. They still had to bring in talents from China to, to have them represent you know, uh, the stars and stripes in at every international level for as far as table tennis is concerned. If Forrest Gump was based on a true story, of course, you know, the United States would have already done well. Mm. But uh, having what, what, and the United States is not the only country having done so. The Australians, the Brits, uh, the European countries have all gone the same way in several other sports, including winter uh, Olympic uh, sp- sporting events as well. The ultimate aim, though, should be to develop homegrown talent. Yes. And in fact, we're talking about table tennis specifically. Outgoing President Lee Bi Wah did mm, say mm, that mm. all this is in the pipeline. And it's a short term. It's a short term uh, measure for short term gains, you know. And um, he mentioned. I mean, Joshua. He mentioned Abbas and Alistair, which I wanted to mention. Back in 1990, when uh, these two played for Singapore, a, a lot of Singaporeans were saying these two Australians should give up their citizenship, come and play for Singapore. Mm. You know, uh, but of course that didn't happen. And the Singapore national—that's the sad part because then it causes people to think. Uh, you know. yeah, yeah, we still need foreign talent. <laughs> but having said that, even with the best Fundy, Sundra, Malik, you know, you name all the players, even with that cohort of players, we still never won the Sea Games gold medal. When we came back into the Suzuki Cup, you know, uh, the ASEAN Federation Regional Tournament with a few foreign uh, talents. We went on to become four-time champions, mm. you know, with the likes of Faroudin Mustafich, Daniel Bennett. But having said that, the FAS has made it uh, mandatory and compulsory that they say they will never... You, are, you have 11 players on the field, you will not see more than eight foreign talents on the field. You'll see probably three or four. The rest will be Singapore-born, just like the Lions 12. Mm. All Singapore-born players. Well, I think ultimately we have to consider this. It's not about whether you are foreign-born or Singapore-born. Mm. It's about how much of a chance you are given and Mm. how much of a chance you are willing to take to commit to the sport. How much do you you really want it? Yes. So so Arthur Lim says, we must invest in our own local talent. He's talking about Singapore-born talent. Keep investing in them, especially those that show potential from a young age. So tell me more about what's being done to spot Singapore-born talent to encourage them to commit to their sport, to give them the leeway to Mm. perhaps do their sport full-time. See, you don't hear this problem regarding our national shooters, our national sailors, our national bowlers. These three, uh, you know, disciplines have done well at the world stage, becoming world champions, uh, becoming youth champions as well at uh, at the Olympic level. So, uh, these, I mean, the the president, Jesse Poir, Lao Tio Ping, the previous president, they've done well in for these three sports. Um, as far as STTA is concerned, uh, table tennis, I think right now they have a pipeline of about a thousand youngsters from the age of five and upwards. They've uh, they've connected themselves with uh, the PAP at the kindergarten level. Uh, they've got 
over, I mean, Libby Ward in her six years as president, $10 million in sponsorship. You must understand, people, I mean, let's be realistic. Everybody wants to support a champion. This will be, so the fact that they've won medals at every major games, so sponsors come in. And to, mm. to have secured $10 million for an NSA over six years is huge. I don't think any other NSA has been able to do that. Where is the $10 million going? It's not going into her pocket. Mm. It's going back into the national... Into developing into, them. Exactly. Into the... Mm. The point is, do they have to win the medals before they are given a chance? You see, the, the, the athletes before the, the sponsors locals? actually oh. put their money on these athletes. <laughs> because in the States, you know, if you have potential and they see it, yeah. that you are a cut above the rest, you mm. haven't been able to maybe prove yourself so much on the international stage already. Mm. They start investing in you from an early age anyway, True. so that you can reach those levels. True. So how can we create that kind of culture in Singapore as well? I, I mean, it, it, it is unfortunately that sort of a situation for certain, uh, for, for certain situations where the fact that we've been deprived of an Olympic medal for almost 50 years. So when they finally did it in 2008, everybody came on board and, you know, they celebrated with the team. So that's why several sponsors came on board as well. When the Lions 12 were formed uh, three years ago, uh, several sponsors also came and, uh, and supported the team because even though it was an all Singapore team they hadn't even started playing but there were still several sponsors who came and lined up and, and put the faith behind the FAS and the Lions 12 they went, went out to finish second uh, in the first season and last year they were champions mm. at an institutional level there are many schemes for sportsmen yes. in Singapore right yeah. for sporting excellence in Singapore uh, what's being done to perhaps facilitate going full time for more sporting sportsmen in Singapore sports people certain Elite athletes in the country have already been are already part of a, a program, a spec sp- a scholarship program that puts them on uh, the pathway, you know, to train full time. Jasmine Sir, our national shooter, who you're here on Sports Zone on Saturday, uh, she's 23. She she graduated from the NUS uh, about a year ago, and uh, for this year, she put uh, she's been training full time, and that's probably one of the key reasons why she won the gold medal at the Commonwealth Games. Now her challenge is at the World Championships in uh, about two weeks, and then the Asian Games. So. It all depends uh, on, like you said, uh, a full-time training has, has really helped certain athletes. Well, if you've got more thoughts on this, uh, whether you agree with Raj on how these foreign-born athletes might have inspired local-born athletes in Singapore, the benefits of the foreign talent scheme, foreign sporting talent scheme, what is it going to take for homegrown athletes to bring in the medals? What is sports about anyway? Is it just about winning those medals? Tell us how you feel on Facebook, Official 9th Rate Live. Many thanks for all your comments today. Uh, those of you who called in on 669 and those of you who were talking to us on Facebook too.